Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Custom Carving and Epoxy UK and I hope you're all doing well. Um, and this video is going to be a bloom with a difference hopefully. So if you're interested in how to create an amazing 3D bloom in the next 10-15 minutes, you're in the right place. So first thing I'm, I'm thinking about here is mainly going to be the design. I want a difference. Um, so I'm going to be using uh, these iridescent rocks for the centre. I'm going to be using my papaya and gold mix mica powders um, just to create a different colour. And then for most of the colour, I'm going to be using alcohol ink, so blue and orange. So again, I'm I suppose I'm mixing those two techniques, mica and alcohol ink effects, in the same bloom. But I want to pipe a slightly different design in it. And I'm going back to my favourite um, bloom mould here, which takes about four ounces of resin. So first step is to mix up four ounces of resin. And I'm going to be using the... T-Expert one-to-one and it's just because I've been getting some really good successes from it recently um, and it's quite an affordable resin and if you guys didn't know I'm probably getting through one to two gallons a week at the minute to try and keep this content coming for you guys so if you can do me a favor hit that button like and subscribe because um, it makes a massive difference to the channel and it's the only way that we're going to grow um, and it's costing me an absolute fortune in resin at the moment so any resin suppliers out there that might be watching and want to do a collab with the channel or sponsor a couple of videos it would be appreciated contact details are in the description let me know so first thing i'm doing is mixing just over two uh, four ounces sorry of this resin and then i'm going to put it in the debubbler and then we should be ready to go. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is wait for the bloom to get, uh, the, the resin to get to around about 35 degrees for this experiment, just because I want it to be thick enough to withstand what I'm gonna do with it, hopefully, <laughs> and not get the dreaded B word. So just gonna mix that up, come back in about, probably 20 minutes once it's up to temperature but if you if you're new to resin as well guys when you're mixing your resin you want to mix it for around about three to four minutes usually and you want it to be streak free now this time of year it's also getting quite cold so if your resins seems to be a lot thicker than it normally is just do yourself a favor put it in a water bath so just a, a tub of water for around about 10 or 15 minutes hot water it doesn't have to be boiling um, but I would say hot water out of a tap, 10 to 15 minutes, and it should make it um, more usable. If you're having problems with any techniques, might be worth you trying a different resin. So gonna mix this up until it's streak free, uh, put it in the debubbler for five minutes, and I'll see you in a second. And we're back, and the temperature is at about 32.1, so still a couple of minutes to go, but that gives me time to mix up the colors that I'm gonna use. So. I'm gonna pour some of these rocks into one of these pots first, and these are just like iridescent glass rocks, but I really like the effect they had when I put them in a bloom. So just for the center part, so I'm just gonna put some of these in here. Not too many, just enough to hopefully create a nice center. So pretty much covering the base of that, and I might not use them all yet, I don't know. Uh, in fact, I probably won't use all of those, but we'll see. I just want it to be enough to create that center there. So I think that's about right. <laughs> and the cups are going everywhere it's going to be a fun experiment i can tell um so just going to pour a tiny bit of resin in there just enough to sort of coat those and the reason you do that is because you want to prevent air bubbles but you also want it to be able to spread um quite easily on the base so next i'm going to do my papaya and gold mix which i absolutely love in blooms and i'm not going to be using as much of it in this one because i think the alcohol inks will be the main color um, but i still want to be able to do some stamens if the design goes the way i want so a decent amount of the papaya because i want that to be quite strong but again remember whenever you do blooms guys try not to make your micas too heavy because that will create the dreaded b word <laughs> Um, so that's my papaya. Now I've got this metallic gold. Um, don't need anywhere near as much as that, but just a tiny bit. And what I find is it just gives it a bit of a golden shimmer and takes a bit of the, the bright orangeness away from the papaya. So if you can see there, it's mainly papaya with a tiny bit of gold. So again, just gonna pour probably about half a pot and that should do. And then for my white, 
I'm just going to be using the Ocean White, which is what I've been having some really good success with. Um, and I just want probably a drop and a half is what I've been finding is probably the best. So just squeeze in the bottle until it comes to the bottom. Always shake it up as well, guys, before you use it. So one bit of string and this when it comes off will be the half. <laughs> there we go. So one and a half and that's all you should need. So if you can see on the base of that cup, that's all I'm going to be using for my white because it's really, really strong stuff. And again, the heavier you mix that, the more chance you've got of that dreaded B word happening. So again, probably about half a cup is all I'm going to need for this. So just going to mix those up. So there's my rocks for the center. Really nice. And they come up, the, all the colors start to show through, uh, which is amazing. This is the papaya and the gold. And always mix your micas properly, guys, because if you don't, you're going to regret it, I promise you. You'll get like a little cloud of mica powder in your finished piece. Um, so really, really scrape around the sides and give it a really good stir. And you will get some bubbles in there, but it's not a big issue. We can get rid of those with the torch later on. So there is that. And then my white, just going to mix that around as well. And as I say, guys, if you're liking my content, if you're learning, if you're just finding it entertaining, do me a favor, like and subscribe, because over 80% of the people that watch these videos don't subscribe. And if they did subscribe, the channel would be a lot larger, would have grown the community already, and we could do a lot more things. I'm trying to grow the channel this year so that we can do giveaways, we can hopefully get a few channel sponsors and things like that, be able to do some competitions, and make it really fun, because that's what I came into resin for. I love the community um, and I think we can get some really fun uh, competitions going and things like that but we need to grow in order for me to be able to do that so if you're liking the content take two minutes if you're watching on the telly which most of you do according to my analytics just log in on the internet and click subscribe it makes a big difference so there's my colors next I'm going to pour in uh, the rest of the resin into this mold and I say this mold it is one of my favorites for blooms you've seen me use it a few times and it's just because for me it's not too small but it's not too big so it doesn't use a gallon of resin like some of my molds but four ounces you can get some really cool effects and again four ounces isn't a huge amount of resin to be using in one project some of my projects I've been using 20 plus ounces and that costs a lot of money, especially if they go wrong. <laughs> so I'm hoping this one doesn't. So again, just pour in the rest. Um, I've got about two ounces left into the mold. And the way I do it is I just go around each of these petals and then pour it out into the center. And hopefully that should create me around about half a centimeter of depth is what I'm wanting because that is enough depth for me that even if I do mix up the micas a little bit heavier than I should, I still hopefully don't get that dreaded B word. Now going around the edges, as I always do, just to remove any of those bubbles that are clinging to the side, and they always do. <laughs> so if you'd miss this step, I guarantee you'll have a bubble on an edge somewhere. And then I can see a couple on the bottom, so I'm just gonna try and bring those up like so. And it takes a bit of playing, but eventually they'll all come up to the surface and then hopefully you can get them with your torch or your heat gun, whatever you want to use. And I think that is the majority. So just wiping my tool so that that can be ready later on when I stir in the design. And then gonna go around with my torch. And again, just make sure that you've not getting too close to the edges if you're using a flame. Some people use a long neck light for this as well. Um, I just didn't get on with them, to be honest. They, they ended up running out far too quickly for my projects. I was getting through more than one a week, and at least with this, it's refillable. So there we go. I think that is all of those bubbles off the surface, gone. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is actually drop my inks before um, I get my um, micas ready. So the plan is here. Um, in fact, no, I'm gonna put the center in first. So put these little stones in the center trying to get it as central as I can. And I wanna make sure that they're all covered by the resin, because if they're not and there's any sticking out, it can affect the blooming. And I want there to be quite a few in here um, because I want that center to be quite big. And hopefully you'll see why when I do the design, but 
Again, trying to keep them in the middle as much as I can, and you guys will probably be able to see better than I can if this is central or not. Looks reasonably central from my angle. And again, just bringing them all into that center, and hopefully it'll come out with a cool effect. So that looks reasonably central. And then I'm just gonna torch it again because I will have introduced bubbles at this point by putting those in. And ideally, I want it to be bubble free. And I'm just looking now, making sure that they're all in the positions that I want them in. And that is that step. So we've got a centre done. <coughs> now we're going to pour the white and the gold and papaya into the piping bags. And again, some people don't use piping bags, guys. I just find it easier um, to control. Also, it since I've been using the piping bags, it um, basically reduces the risk of the B word for me. I've had a lot less problems with it. Um, and also, if you're trying to get intricate designs in, good luck to you if you're doing it from one of these pouring pots because I just haven't been able to. Maybe other people can, um, but for me, if I want a particular design going in, I'm much better off using a piping bag. And you can control the flow by how big a hole you cut. So just remember that. And piping bags cost pennies, guys, on Amazon, on eBay, wherever you get them. I think you get packs of like 200 for like five pounds. So it's well worth doing. So they're now in the bags, pretty much ready to go. And now I'm gonna drop my inks just to make sure it's got a couple of minutes before I actually pipe in my design. So I'm gonna go with orange and blue for this one. So again, make sure, in fact I haven't, so make sure you shake up your inks just to mix them together. I use the Let's Resin inks because I've had the most success with those. And I'm just gonna put two drops of this orange in the center, three, <laughs> and then one drop of the standard blue around the edge of that orange. And it will push it back into the center a little bit. And I don't particularly want it to go all the way out. So we'll see, one, two, and I'm just doing a drop for each one of the petals. And I'm hoping it still leaves a little bit of clear at the top for the design that I've got in my head. There we go. And that is, that's all I'm gonna do with the alcohol inks. And hopefully we'll see why when I get to the piping. But just giving it a second, remember don't use your torch now you've dropped your alcohol inks because you can set your workstation on fire. <laughs> which none of us want. Luckily, and I don't know how, I've avoided that so far. So again, just squeezing my bloom paste, giving it a twist, and then that is pretty much ready to pipe. And then with your blooms, guys, it's all about the design that you choose to pipe in. Um, I'm gonna go with something hopefully a little bit different today, if it works. And I want to try and get almost two completely different styles of petals in this bloom and you can see that's my orange and papaya mix. So I'm going to start with the white and I'm going to do something that I haven't done before um, which is basically I want this to be quite small initially and then I might cut, cut it a bit larger when I go around the edges. So the plan is I'm going to go in in almost figure of eight style and I'm going to try and get two rows in the center bit just on the outskirts of where those rocks are, if it works. So I want it to be quite thin initially, so maybe one to two mil for these. And what you're looking for with your bloom paste, guys, is you want it to automatically drip out. You don't want to have to squeeze, because if you have to squeeze, then you're gonna get uneven amounts coming out, and that's not what you want. So again, I've done this quite small. I'm probably gonna make it bigger in a second, but you'll see why, hopefully. There we go, and that is now coming out nicely. So for each one of these petals, the design I'm thinking of is sort of figure of eight to create two circles in each one of those blooms. So here we go. And that's not quite, there we go, that's better. And you'll see why in a second, providing it works. And again, don't worry about them being too perfect guys, because in nature, nothing is. I'm just trying to 
this is a new style that I haven't tried yet and I was just really wanting to give it a go because I think it could give us a really interesting effect in sort of two different layers so we'll see but this is the bit that makes or breaks your bloom guys it's all about the design that you put in and it doesn't always work unfortunately no matter what you do you will have failures so if you do don't stress about it and just keep persisting eventually you'll get what you want so that is that and now I'm going to try and do a little circle and that's not coming out just the way that I want but we will see what happens and I'm not the best piper in the world as you may be able to tell but I'm just hoping that I leave enough space as well in the center of these circles to put a little stamen in so that is the ones in the middle and then I'm going to just do one in the middle above that figure of eight that I've just done and that one's a little bit heavy I'm worried about that one and this one doesn't seem heavy enough <laughs> it's often the way so now I'm just going to go around the edges with my white and trying to keep it even but I still don't want to if I can avoid it I don't want to be touching the outer mold and then I'm going to go around again again just trying to keep the shape what's already in there and that is that so that's pretty much it for my white at this point uh, in fact yes it is yeah I'm not going to overdo it I think you can always overdo it with blooms um, I do think there's a bit more space around that side actually so do you know what they don't have to be symmetrical we can add a couple in and as I say it's my first time with this particular design so if it does all go wrong don't shoot the messenger I just thought it'd be interesting to try something different in a bloom there we go so that's those just going to fold up my white and then we'll crack on with the uh, the orange in fact for me it needs one more circle I'm just looking at it and any big gaps I just want to put one in so that's fine now I'm going to try and snip this one even sh smaller if I can and I'm hoping that it's thick enough that it will naturally come out and it won't give me any issues there we go and I'm going to speed this up for you guys so I want one little dot in the center of each and I'm going to let it just drip off like so there we go and now I'm just going to put one layer hopefully in between the white I'm going to start here and then these little tips here as well I'm just going to put like a little arrow in like so and then I'm going to go in with one more dot in each and you'll see why in a second when I draw in the design and again the hard thing is I don't know if any of this is going to work yet but I think it'll be cool if it does and that's what it's all about so next with my dotting tool I'm going to pull them out first so that's why I put that extra dot in there and I'm just going to literally from that dot pull it out like so on each of these outer petals trying to be gentle because I don't want to disturb the circles that I've just put in too much like so again trying to go as close as I can to the mold but not actually touching it because that will prevent it pulling in there we go and now for each line where the petals are sort of coming in I just want to bring it down sort of halfway like so just so it creates a bit of separation but hopefully doesn't impact those circles too much but it's starting to bloom so that's always a positive sign and then the center I'm just gonna leave I think maybe pull it in a little like so and then just give it a tiny swirl 
but again that's going to be mainly covered by those rocks in fact what I might do is just bring a tiny bit out like that into any of those gaps there that looks cool to me and that's it I'm just going to leave it now and see what it does I am going to put a back on this though I think and I'm just going to put a plain black on. Now the alcohol inks that I put in should have settled by this point so again I'm just going to go around it with the torch to get rid of any bubbles that I might have just put in um, but I'm really hopeful with this one guys that I don't get the dreaded B word and hopefully we'll get a cool design on the front let's say uh, just trying to get rid of any of those surface bubbles like so and again you don't need to go too close but I think that's going to create a cool design, hopefully. So we'll come back in probably six hours and I'll just put, I think, a plain black back on this one because I don't want to spoil it if the designs worked. So I'll see you guys in a few hours. Hey guys, and I'm back. And this looks like it's blooming really well. So I've been thinking about what to do as a back because I don't want to take anything away from the, the bloom itself if it, um, if it has worked. Now, I didn't particularly want black, but I've got this graphite um, mica powder, which is kind of like a dark gray slash blue. So I thought that would look quite well, and it might actually complement the blue uh, alcohol ink that I put in the center. So again, I'm just gonna literally mix that up, pour it on, and then we can demold in the morning. So, but I thought this color itself might be dark enough to actually highlight the white. Um, but also hopefully complement the, the blue in the center as well without overtaking the piece because I've done that before where I've had a really good bloom effect but then the backing I've put on has sort of overtaken everything which is not what I wanted. So not gonna do any effects with this one, not gonna try crackle effect or anything like that. I just want this to be a simple solid color back and hopefully it, the bloom will have worked as well and it will really emphasize it. So that's that color. It's almost, a, I would say, a cross between gray, silver and blue, um, this graphite. So again, hopefully, what I might do though is add a little bit of black to it anyway because I do still want it a little bit darker than what it is. Um, so I'm just thinking, have I got some black mic powder that I can just add? just to darken it up. Uh, don't be afraid to mix your micas, guys, as well, you know? It's part of the fun for me of working with resin is you can... Morning, guys, and it's the next day, and that uh, graphite color seems to be really nice, actually, uh, the way it's cured. I'm liking that. So it's time to demold. Um, I'm excited for this because, as I say, the design is something completely different, which I haven't tried before. Um, and I'm hoping that it will have come through to the front because I didn't go crazy this time, so we will see. Um, but here we go. It's come out of the mold okay, which is always a good sign. And let's have a look. Wow. Well, it hasn't gone the way that I thought it would, but it is still lovely. <laughs> I thought I would get like little circles um, coming down a little bit, the way that I piped them in, but that hasn't happened now. It's kind of gone in this pattern, which I don't know about you, but I actually really like it. Um, very strange though, because as I say, I piped in those ovals, and what I was hoping to get was something A little bit like these, um, but for one reason or another, <laughs> it didn't happen. And I've just got loads of these sort of stripes, but I don't know about you, but I think it still looks really cool. Um, and again, you've got the different ones where, the, where we put the gold bits in. I really like that. So again, it wasn't exactly what I was going for because I was hoping for something like this, but do you know what? It's been a success. Um, and I don't know how the resin's done that either, because literally you saw me pipe in circles of eight, basically. Um, and that's what we've got. So there we go. But I think it's been a success. 
Um, just want to take a minute as well to thank anybody that's joined membership as well, which you can now join on the channel. It's really appreciated. It helps support us grow. Um, so thank you for that and anybody that's given us a super thanks as well. So apart from that, I hope you like it and I will see you guys on the next one.